In this episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to do 10 easy fall slash Halloween projects. We'll first start with this old frame that I got at the thrift store for $3.99. We'll paint it and we'll turn it into this. I'll then show you how I took two items that I bought at the thrift store and turned it into this exquisite piece of Halloween decor. Buffalo check is all the rage and I'm going to show you how to make this buffalo check pumpkin as well as this beautiful fall swag. We'll take an old recipe box we got from the thrift store and we'll brew up some potions and delicacies using these witchy recipes. We're not done yet. We're going to take this cheesy plastic pumpkin and we're going to turn it into something awesome using a baking soda technique. We'll take this kettle looking pot that I got from the thrift store and I'll show you how to turn it into a witch's cauldron. We're going to take these old frames that I got from the thrift store and we're going to turn them into awesome Halloween framed art. And lastly, we're going to take this early 90s coffee photo that nobody wants and we're going to turn it into a 3D shadow box. Oh wait, and I can't forget the weird thing that my mom gave me and said, hey, can you do a decal for that? Decal for what? What is it even? I don't know. But I'm going to show you what I did with it in the end. So if you're ready to dive into this week's projects, then let's go ahead and do this. One quick note, if you're new to my channel, I just want to welcome you. Thank you for stopping by. I hope that you'll consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you ring the bell because that way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Okay, so we're going to make some easy breezy Halloween home decor. So I have this frame here and it's only $3.99. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all this out. We're going to spray this black. And then when I was at Sweet and Sassy Treasures, guess what I got? Look at this. This was only $1.50 and um, it's going to be so easy because we're going to spray this and all we have to do is just kind of put this in there and boom, done. We're using Rust-Oleum Flat Protective Enamel Paint and we're going to spray this whole frame black. Okay, so our frame is all painted black and we're gonna do this awesome print that I got at Sweet and Sassy Treasures. I love it. This spooky kind of spider, we're gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put some Mod Podge on this and then I'm gonna Mod Podge that on there. So I have my Mod Podge and I'm just going to put it on the, back, the entire back of this. Now if you use a clear coat on the back, you will not get any bubbles. It's just so much easier. To spray one clear coat and then you just can avoid the mess. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to try to line that up the best I can. Just want to smooth this out. I'm going to see what it looks like behind the frame here. Oh yeah, that's going to be nice. So I'm just going to put a little more Mod Podge in, a, in certain areas that it's not sticking down. I'm going to cut the excess print away.
And let's see. Let's check again. Yeah, I think that's gonna look great. Okay, but I'm gonna clean my glass and then we're gonna put it in. So this is our glass. I'm just gonna clean that. All right, we managed to get that in. I'm gonna give that one good wipe again. Okay, and let's put our print in. bubbles. See, I didn't clear coat this and I don't know if you can see it, but I have some bubbles in there. If you clear coat it, you will not have a problem like this. So I was in a big hurry and did not do that. And this is what will happen, but that's okay. I will smooth them out. You just don't, you want to avoid it if you can. Well, after smoothing out all the bubbles and getting it back in the frame, I think it turned out awesome, but you just really want to put a clear coat on so you can save yourself the headache. When I was at the thrift store, I came across this wreath. It has feathers all over it. And it was originally from Home Goods for $24.99. I got it for $4.99. And right away, it reminded me of Halloween. And I thought, oh my gosh, I wish I could find a round frame, you know, that could go behind this. And I walked down the frame aisle and lo and behold, look it. Um, I think this might be stock photo or somebody got a divorce, I don't know. But um, this was $6.99. And we're going to put an image in here and then we're going to glue this wreath on top and I think it's going to look awesome. So let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so we want to paint this. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get this out. So I'm just going to lift up all the tabs and then we'll pull this out. You know what, this really is a wedding photo. See? Yeah, this is definitely a wedding photo. Okay, well. I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna turn this over and we are gonna paint it. We're gonna use the Black Velvet by DIY Paint. And we're gonna paint that. Okay, so our frame is completely dry now, and we're gonna take what was once a wedding photo, and we're gonna replace it with this awesome print here. I love this print, I think it's gorgeous, and it's gonna look great together. Okay, so let's get that on our board. We're gonna be using Mod Podge again. I'm just going to kind of cut this down a little bit just so it's a little more manageable. Um, let's take a look what we want here. If I fold this under here and we're going to put this on top. Is that enough? Maybe we need to bring this down a little more to see more of that crown. Oh yeah, I think that's gonna look cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna fold this right here. And then I'm gonna fold it here so I know how much to cut off. We just wanna make it a little more manageable and by cutting some of this off, it will really help. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. If you spray a little of this Krylon sealer on the back of your print, you will get no bubbles whatsoever. So I think that's a good thing to do. See, I didn't clear coat this, and I don't know if you can see it, but I have some bubbles in there. Okay, we are now ready to put some of this Mod Podge on the back of our print. Actually, you know what? I can just put some on this, and then we'll put our print down. Okay, so now that we have the Mod Podge on there, I'm just gonna place our print down on top. I'm gonna line it up. And then you're just gonna smooth that on over. Let's make sure that we have it in the right place. I don't want the beak to be cut off. Yeah, I think that's gonna be beautiful. Okay, so just smooth out your print. So I'm just gonna trim the excess off of this print here. So I'm gonna flip this over. You wanna make sure that you have this, the top part of him, on the top part where the, it hangs. So I'm gonna put that in there. You know, this actually looks good in the black frame, but you know what? We're gonna put the feathers around it, so let's get the glue gun going. Okay, I am just gonna put some glue around the back here of this frame. And then I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna end up putting this right around like so, and pressing down. I think it's beautiful. When you go to Hobby Lobby, everything has this um, buffalo check, everything. It's like the hot thing, even for Christmas. But anyway, I seen a lot of pumpkins done in this and I thought that I would show you a different way to do pumpkins. If you remember last week, we sewed them on a machine. This week, you are not gonna need a sewing machine. I'm gonna show you a different way of making pumpkins. You're gonna start by going to a fabric store, whether it's Hobby Lobby or Joann's and getting fabric. I bought a yard because we're going to do a couple projects, but you really only need about a half a yard. So like last week, we are going to cut a circle. I went to Hobby Lobby and bought a yard of fabric, but that's only because we're going to use this in a different project as well. So I'm going to cut a circle. You want a big enough circle that it's not going to be puny. So I'm just cutting that around. Okay, I think this is a decent size circle. So you start off with one of these circles here. Now using a big needle, we're gonna take some embroidery thread. You can find that also at Hobby Lobby and you want the black one, it's number 310. We're just gonna take some of that embroidery thread and thread our needle with it. And you would just want a big enough amount that can go around. OK, 
Okay, so th that looks good to me. I'm just gonna snip the end. And what we're gonna do is just hand gather this all around. We're gonna go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And you're gonna do that all the way around this pumpkin. Okay, so we have that gathered all the way around. Now we're gonna get some stuffing and kitty litter. Yes, you heard me right, kitty litter. You're just gonna want to get some kitty litter. You should get unscented. This is all they had, so I have scented, but really just get unscented. A cheap bag. And why are we using kitty litter, you ask? Well, as I explained in the other video, when I used to do dolls, like if you just use fiber fill, which again, this is what we're gonna use is polyfill to stuff this. This is a really good brand, you definitely want this. It does not bunch up and that's really important. But anyway, if you just use polyfill, it makes it so light and people, when they pick something up, if it's heavy, they equate it to quality you know, like it's a quality item. So you wanna have a little weight in there. And as a doll maker, we used to use this kitty litter just at the bottom to kind of give it some weight. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna take a cup of kitty litter. And we're gonna pour it right into our, our pouch here. And that's just gonna give it some weight and when people pick it up they're gonna feel like it's a quality item and then we're gonna take some of that polyfill that I just showed you and we're just gonna continue to stuff it Okay, once you have enough stuffing in there, we're gonna pull together our two ties. Remember I told you to leave a little tail on the end? Well, this is why. We are gonna pull these together. You can leave a little bit of an opening, but don't leave too big of an opening and then just tie it off. And if you do have too big of an opening here, all you have to do is take your needle again and you can actually hand stitch this back and forth. Just kind of getting the fiber fill where we need it to be. I think that actually looks good. Um, my hole here that we're gonna put the stem is is a little too large, so I think I will do exactly what I just told you to do. Just go like this. here, grab a little. You can just sew this up, hand stitch it, you know, a little, a little more to make a smaller opening.
Okay, so now that is like the perfect small hole that we can just put a stem in here and that's it. But before we do our stem, we're gonna have to make this look more like a pumpkin. Right now, it just kinda is a little bit of a ball. So what you wanna do is you wanna take some embroidery thread. I still have some, you know, that's connected, but you can start with a new piece. But anyway, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of embroidery thread you are gonna wrap it around this way. I know it's hard to see because it is black, but if you look on the back, I did it this way, okay? All the way around one time. I'm just gonna put a stitch in that to hold it. Okay, then we're gonna go the opposite way and cross it over like so and then you're gonna pull that pretty tight. Make sure you have enough thread. I just ran out of thread. Okay, so that's what you want right here. Just one way, then the other way. Then we're gonna take one more piece and we're gonna go diagonally with it. Okay, so I have it like this. I need one more piece of thread. Okay, with another piece of thread, we're gonna start on this side again, but we're gonna go diagonally. So let's see, we're gonna wanna start about right here. And we are just gonna wrap that around like so. And you can just kind of end your your thread right here on the opposite side. You can go around to the other side. Let's go in and out, in and out, till we get to the other piece of thread so that we can pull it tauntily. Okay, so I'm just gonna tie that off so it's gonna be tight. Now let's get rid of our strings. Want to clean all that up. And as you can see, now we have sections of the pumpkin. See how it makes that indention, which is exactly what we want. On the front, we also have sections. Now what I'm gonna do is just get a stem from outside a branch. We're gonna paint it black and we're gonna put it inside this. We're gonna hot glue that into our pumpkin. Now I have a branch that I just found outside. I just cut it and we're gonna take a little of this paint. You can use any kind of paint, acrylic, black, whatever. Right now I'm using um, DIY paint in little black dress because I just have that on hand, but you can use any black paint. So I'm just gonna paint this black real quick. And we're gonna let that dry. Okay, our stick is now dry. We're just gonna put a little hot glue right here in the center. You guys will be proud of me. I got a new glue gun. Yes, I did. And we're just gonna stick that stick right in there. You can even take a little glue and just kinda put it right like that and then push your fabric up against it. Okay. 
And you know what we're gonna finish with? Oh yes, a hang tag. Okay, so I picked this hang tag. I think this is really cool. We're gonna put that around there. If you want this pumpkin to be more like fall, you know, Thanksgiving, which it totally could be, you could do like a Thanksgiving kind of hang tag or put some leaves on this, something like that. So there we go. So we're gonna make a swag with some of our leftover material and some burlap that we have. And we're also going to use these that I found at Hobby Lobby. So let's get these painted. We're going to need four out of this package because we are going to have it say fall. F A L L. Okay, and let's get these painted black. I'm going to use some of this little black dress, although you can use any black paint. Uh, you know, just the acrylic paint is fine. It's just this is what I have on hand, so we're going to use that. And we're just going to paint these up all black. Okay, we're gonna let those dry and then we'll paint the back side of them too. These are all dry, I'm gonna flip them over and we're gonna paint the back. And while that's drying, we're gonna cut out some letters to say fall. Okay, I just got done cutting out the letters. It's probably hard to see this. The F, the A, the L, L for fall that we're gonna put on these pieces here. Now, let's go ahead and peel. This off. Perfect. We need to get out this little extra vinyl that's in the A, so I'm just gonna pick that out of there. Now what you need to do is Get some transfer tape for that. I, I'm gonna get the transfer tape and then we're gonna cut these out. So I'm just gonna take my transfer tape. I buy it on a big roll like this. I'm gonna put these down. I'm gonna cut across. each letter out because we're using them on separate little pieces. It'll just make it easier that way. I'm gonna get my credit card again. We're gonna go over our transfer tape. Uh oh, I see I didn't have enough. Hopefully that'll just come off though. Same with this one, I didn't have enough. That's okay though, we'll be fine. So I'm just gonna start by peeling the F off and I'm gonna put the F right in the middle here. Now again with our credit card, we're just gonna 
Go over that and then pull the transfer tape off. If I can get a hold of it. So I'm just gonna go over this. I'm gonna pull the transfer tape off. Okay, I have about six and a half feet that I cut of jute. So we're gonna make a loop here on the end so that we can hang things off of. I'm gonna tie that and then knot that off. Okay, so now we have a loop which is really good and we are gonna start weaving this through. The easiest way to do is just to kind of twist it. We can adjust these after, but for right now, I'm just kinda eyeballing them. You know, I actually want to go through the opposite way, I think. I want them to go inward here. And again, this is gonna get kind of like frayed, so you can twist it and it'll go in really easy, just to let you know. A. I'm gonna leave a little space because we're gonna put some we're gonna put some of um, that buffalo check and burlap in between because we're making a nice swag or garland whatever you want to call it And then we're gonna knot this. Well, just like how we knotted this other end, we're gonna knot this end too. This is what it's gonna hang off of. Okay, perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tear pieces of this fabric here. We have so much left over, so we're gonna easily be able to do that. Then I'm gonna get some burlap and we're gonna kinda just do like some of the buffalo check, burlap, buffalo check, burlap. We're just gonna keep doing that and this is gonna be a beautiful garland or swag, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, I'm gonna start by ripping pieces of this here. I'm gonna probably do about like one inch, I don't know, what is that? No, maybe that's two inches. So I'm just gonna cut right here and then you can easily just kind of tear all the way down. 
gonna do that again. About the same amount. We're just gonna keep ripping strips. See how the edge is coming out? This is what you want. I mean, it just looks nice rather than just cut. You wanna pull out any extra strings cause that's not gonna look good. Okay, I think this is good to start off with. We're probably gonna want these, let's see, if I tie this around, we're probably gonna want that to be about this big, so we'll, we'll cut all our strands according to this. Well, that one's a little smaller, but okay. They don't have to be exact, but you want them close. And we can always cut more if we need more, but for right now, this is just what we're doing. Small. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of strands that we can get started with. Um, we, we first though have to cut some burlap too because we're gonna interchange them. We're gonna do some buffalo check, then we're gonna do some burlap, buffalo check, burlap. So let's get our burlap and cut some of that. Okay, so I bought this burlap at Walmart. You can probably get it for, I don't know, I think I paid $3.66 a yard. Don't quote me on that, but pretty close to it, so. I use it on a lot of different things, so I bought a whole bunch, but let's go ahead and cut some strips of the burlap so that we can interchange them. I know they have ribbon that you can buy, but it's just so much cheaper to do it this way. So that's what we're doing. I'm just gonna cut some strips. Now this is really like, it frays so easy. And you might even wanna fray it a little on the sides. So we're just gonna cut some strips of that. Okay, you ready? Let's get started. So I'm gonna start right here by our tied knot, and we're just gonna tie that on. We can cut strings later. Don't worry about it if it's all stringy right now. Okay, there's one. Then we're gonna alternate with the burlap. We're gonna tie that on. And slide that up. Okay, so we have, I'm just gonna cut 
cut some of this. Again, you're going to have to cut your strings. You're going to have strings, but for right now, it's no big deal. I'm just kind of tightening this up so I can show you. Anyway, so we started with the buffalo check. Then we moved on to the burlap. And then now we're going to go and do another one of the buffalo check. And you just want to keep sliding these up your jute rope. Okay, so now we have our buffalo check, we have our burlap, another buffalo check. Now we're gonna do another burlap. And we're just gonna continue to do that all the way down the rope. And again, you're gonna have to cut strings, I'm sure, because it's not gonna be perfect here. Okay, now let's do another buffalo check. Okay, so we're gonna end up cutting some of these and fluffing them up. Let's do that right now so that you can actually see what it's gonna look like when we, as we proceed down. So I'm gonna try to make these all the same size. So I'm gonna trim these right now like this. Just wanna trim the ends. I'm gonna do that on this side as well. some strings out just to make it look a little better and you're going to fluff these all up again pulling any strings that you see you don't want it to look messy you might have to cut the strings as well. And if you see any longer pieces, Don't be afraid to cut them. I mean, all it is is just tying things on and tidying it up with, you know, just snipping the strings. Okay, I think that is really looking good. Okay, so I just wanna show you how this is starting to look. As you can see, it's looking pretty cool. And then we're gonna do that in between all the letters as well and finish like this at the end as well. Okay, we're gonna proceed in the middle here. I'm gonna tie some buffalo check here. Tie some burlap. And then one more buffalo check to 
finish this off. And we're also gonna cut these. They're a little long. So I'm just gonna snip right here. And let's kinda rough these up a little. Okay, we got the middle done. We got the side done. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of this here in the middle. And then we're just gonna finish with how we did the this end here. We're gonna do a whole bunch of them on the end there. So we're gonna start with our buffalo check. Now that we have all that, we're gonna get the strings off of it. You can just pull at them, and then we'll cut whatever ones that are not gonna come off. Let's trim this, let's give this a trim here. So I bought this recipe box for $3.99 at the thrift store. We're gonna just take all this off. I think this is more like a sticker or something. Yep, it is. Um, we're gonna peel those off and then we're gonna paint this completely black. Okay. Okay, so we have this recipe box that has these little, I don't know, sticker things. We're, we're gonna pull this off. I don't want this on here. Gonna pull that off. Same with these little things, I want them off too. I'm gonna use the black velvet DIY paint and we're gonna paint the whole thing um, black. Okay, our recipe box is completely dry. I think it looks great. Um, the only thing is, I think we need something on the front here. I went to Joann's and guess what? I picked up this. I think this would look awesome on the front. But I think we need to paint it first. I have Kryolan, I believe it's called, um, and DIY paint. We're just gonna, we're gonna paint this real quick. Okay, we just painted this, it's completely dry. I'm gonna put some wax on it just to give it a little bit like antique kind of look. But first, I wanna sand our box just to kind of show the edges here. 
I think that's just gonna make our box have a lot of character. So I'm gonna take a little sandpaper and rough up the edges. This looks so much better that way. Okay, now we're gonna take some of that Amy Howard dark wax. You can take any dark wax to do this. You can even use stain and you'll get the same results. I'm just taking a little bit of wax here and I'm gonna rub that on. So I like that and I think that we should go ahead and glue this on the front. Okay, so we're gonna glue that on the front. I'm gonna use some of my Star Bond that I have. So it's a two part thing. You just kind of put a little glue there and then you use this accelerator like on the back of this. And then once you place the two pieces together, it instantly bonds. So I'm just gonna put a little of this Star Bond on here. Okay, that should be good. And then I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna spray the back of this with the accelerator. Okay, so we have our little piece that we sprayed with the accelerator. I'm gonna flip this over and place this right in the center. Make sure you have it lined up. This bonds, like it's pretty instant. So we'll put that right in the middle there. Yeah, I can't even move it now. <laughs> okay, so again, make sure you have it lined up because once that's down, it's down. I think that looks really good though. It looks really antique -y and witchy, so perfect. Um, I think that we need something to say, like maybe witch recipes, witchy recipes. So I'm gonna cut something out on my silhouette and we'll, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so if you remember, we glued this on, and now I cut out the words. Okay, so I'm just gonna peel this off. Just wanna be very careful, because some of that's very delicate. And then we just need to weed these out and get the little extra pieces that are in between like the H and the R and the P. So I'm just gonna weed those out. After you weed out the lettering, you're gonna apply transfer tape. I'm gonna peel this back and your design comes up with the transfer tape. And I'm gonna lay this on its back and we are gonna line that up. I think that looks good there. So let's, uh, okay, I think that looks good there. So let's go ahead and do that. Just wanna go over it with your credit card. I'm gonna peel this away. Perfect. Doesn't that look awesome? I love it. Okay, so you're probably thinking, well, that's great and everything, but what you're gonna put in there? Guess what? 
I have some recipe cards that I made up and I think they're gonna look really cool in there. So let me show you what I have. Okay, so I made up these um, recipe cards. I think they're really cool. Um, Grandma Hattie's Love Potion, Crunch Beetle Brittle, Fried Bat Wings, Colony Spider Leg Soup, Three Layer Insect Dip, and then also there's a blank card. And then I've already cut these out. This is uh, the Flying Broom Cocktail and Toad Toe Toast. So you're just gonna um, cut these out. You get four sheets and there's eight all together, eight cards. You're just gonna cut them out. So you have like a variety of them. Anyway, I'm just gonna finish cutting these out and then we'll finish putting this all together. So I have cut out all our cards here, our recipe cards. And we want them to sit well in the box. So in order to do that, we're gonna need a little paper just to kind of like boost them up so you can actually see them. So just put a little bit of paper at the bottom and then we're just gonna put our cards in here so that everybody can see all the cool recipes. Okay, so we have all our witchy recipes in there. And at the dollar store, I got some of this. I took it out of the package because I had to see, and it's so cool. For a buck, we can drape this over to make it look really witchy. I'm gonna cut some off here because we have way too much. It's so cool though. And then I also bought this too, the spider webbing. We can take a little of that and just pull some of that. Place it over. Just to make it a little spookier. Very cool. Okay, so I bought this um, pumpkin here at the thrift store. Um, it looks a little cheap, it's plastic. It was like $1.99. So I wanna paint it. Let's get this raffi off here and um, let's do this. Oh, look what they were hiding, a broken stem. But that's okay, because I can fix that with a little magic scalp or paper clay. So we're just gonna use a little of this creative paper clay. I love using this, it's an awesome brand and uh, I've been using it for years. So what we're gonna do is just take a little bit of this and we're gonna put it around the stem since it needs some fixing here. That's it. We'll let that dry and then we can paint that too. Okay, so our paper clay is all dry here. And I'm gonna take a little of this acrylic paint. It's um, Hippo Gray. And we're gonna do a little technique here. So I've added a little gray paint in here. And then we're gonna use some baking soda First, I'm just gonna paint one coat of the gray on here. And then I'm gonna go over it in certain spots and make it look like cement.
now that we have it all painted gray, I'm gonna take a little of this baking soda. I'm gonna add it to our paint, and that's gonna add some texture to it. It's gonna give it that kind of cement type look. So I'm just gonna add some in here, about half and half, half paint, half baking soda. We're just gonna mix that around. And then I'm just gonna kinda put it on. You're gonna stipple that on. Some parts I want smooth, but some parts I kinda want it to have that stippled kinda textured look. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. We're just gonna let that dry. Okay, so our pumpkin is all dry. It has a great texture to it. I think it's just a little too dark. I'm not really liking how dark this really is. So I'm just gonna use a little of my Annie Sloan um, French linen on it. And I think that is just gonna lighten it up and make it look awesome. But again, this it has great texture to it. Okay, so I have my Annie Sloan French linen. I'm gonna use a little bit of water here just to kind of water it down because I just want to change the color just slightly. So let's go ahead and do that. I know this looks like it's really a different color, but once it dries, it's going to look awesome. Again, we're just doing like a water wash, like a wash on there. Yeah, I like this much better. It's just not as dark. It really needed some lightening up. So now I'm just, I'm gonna go in with a little, like just straight paint and just, we're gonna highlight all these little kind of high points here on the pumpkin. Okay, and we're now we're gonna let that dry. Okay, so our pumpkin is completely dry. It looks very much like cement. It has this beautiful texture because we use that baking soda. And uh, we kind of left the stem the little darker color, but we did go over it with that um, Annie Sloan um, French linen, which gave it a little softer kind of look because it was just like a real hard, dark gray like this. Anyway, I think this came out great. It made a cheap pumpkin look like an expensive pumpkin. And the only thing we need to do is just kind of like finish it up with a hang tag. I know you guys are probably tired of me saying it needs a hang tag, but I just really feel like a hang tag gives it a finished look.
I also bought this cauldron at the thrift store. Uh, it was $2.99. However, it just looks a little too new with this silver handle on there. I think that we need to spray this flat black and it would look so much better. So I took it outside and I sprayed it with that flat black enamel paint. Okay, so we've painted our cauldron like a flat black and now we're just gonna kind of decorate it a little. So I'm gonna take some of this polyfill that I have. Sorry, you guys. We're gonna take some of this polyfill. It's just stuffing. I stuff all my dolls with it. Well, when I was making dolls. So you're just gonna take a little of this polyfill and um, this is a 16 ounce bag. I used to get it in five pound bags. This is really the best stuff. It's, it's awesome um, stuffing. So anyway, you're just gonna take a little of this this is gonna look like smoke coming out of our cauldron. Just put a little of that in there. And then, let's see, what else can we do? I think we should add some of these berries. I just think that these berries would look awesome. I got these from Hobby Lobby. I got them for $3.99. So I might put those off to the side a little bit. And put the, oh yeah, that's looking great. And, it's my little mouse. I had made this little mouse a couple years back and I just haven't really done anything with it. It was for a Halloween project that I never finished. So we're gonna use him. We're gonna kind of put him on the side, hanging on the side. I think he'll be cute. I think we'll finish with this hang tag here. Oh, oh, our little guy fell off. I'll have to reposition him. So I could either put him in here or maybe I could just leave him on the side too. Kind of post him there. He's kind of cute like that too. Uh, we'll see. We'll play around with it. But I think this is super cute for what, $2.99? You can make it look extraordinary. So we have these oval frames with a print in there. We need to get the print out of there, so I'm just gonna cut the backing and get the glass out and we're gonna do a little special Halloween type thing in there. So first I'm just gonna kinda use my back of my scissors to cut this, to expose the backing so we can get it out. So it looks like it has these little prongs here. We're gonna have to lift all those up. I'm gonna get my screwdriver. So I'm gonna take my screwdriver and just kind of lift these up so that we can get the backing out. says something on here. I cannot read it. Maybe you can. We're going to save these prints because you just never know if they're worth anything, but I'm going to save them.
Now we could take the glass off if we wanted to. I'm still not sure if I want to do that or not. But um, at least we got this all disassembled. I'm going to do the same thing with this one as well. This one also says something. Again, it's so light, it's hard to read, but maybe you can make it out. You know, we definitely are gonna have to take this glass out because of the fact that we need to spray it. So here is that print. We're gonna spray these frames, so we are gonna take the glass out. We'll clean it while these are drying from painting. Okay, our frames are dry, but um, we need to clean up this glass a little. So I'm just taking the price tags off. And then we're gonna clean it with some of this glass cleaner. Love this glass cleaner, I swear. During the pandemic, there was, Windex was completely out and I tried this. It is so lemony fresh and it's, it's awesome. I will not go back to Windex. I'm just gonna finish cleaning these off and then I'm gonna pop the glass back in. Okay, so we got that one in. I'm just gonna wipe this. Because again, I have fingerprints all over it. Okay, so I have these prints here. They're five by seven, which that's the measurement of our frame. Um, these are available in my Etsy store. If you also want to do this project, all you have to do is pick up some thrift store frames. They can be square, uh, square or oval. I'm just gonna cut this out. These are downloadable, so you're just gonna download them and then print them out on some cardstock or paper. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda eyeball this and see where I want it to go. I think that looks super cute right there. What do you think? So I'm just gonna kind of indent it with my finger so that I know where to cut the excess off. You just indent it. Then just trim off the excess. I'm gonna put this in the back. Oh, I think that looks so cute. Okay, so now we can put our backing on. And I'm just gonna kind of try to position that in there and then we'll push down all our little tabs here. Oh, that one came out. Again, these are old frames, so that's all right. We have more than enough to hold it in place. Flip them all down to hold your print and the backing. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I think they've been bent one too many times. Oh, that one too. Okay, hopefully this one will stand. Okay, good. As long as we have a few of them to hold it in, but there you go. I'm gonna repeat the same process with the other print. Okay. 
Let's look. Very nice. Super cute. I thought this one here was really cool. Um, as you can see, this cafe and mocha are behind the glass, so we're gonna have to take this paper off, and we're just gonna take a razor blade and scrape that off and do our own little thing. Okay, this so is just that, we got that out. Now, let's see if we can get this glass out. Oh, they have this glued in there too. So we're going to throw this out and then we're going to take a little bit of um, like a razor blade and just kind of scrape this off. It scrapes off really easy so no worries there. Let's go ahead and clean up this glass here. Spray a little of that on there. Now this is rice paper. Again, I got that at Sweet and Sassy Treasures. She did this really awesome book in this and it looks so cool. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our coffee frame that we just took apart. We are gonna put this on the backing right here. We're gonna put this on the backing. We'll put, you know, the frame and the glass and on the front of the glass, remember last week we used a witch on that cutting board? Well, now we're gonna use the other witch to be like in the front here. So it's gonna give like a 3D effect, which is gonna be super cool. So I'm gonna cut her out and then we'll get to assembling this. So she's gonna go on like about right here and I think that's gonna look really cool. All right, let's do this. So I'm just gonna use a little Mod Podge and put that all over the backing here so we can put that rice paper on it. Now with rice paper, it's a little more expensive, but there's no bubbles. You do not need to worry about any bubbles, which is really nice. So we're just gonna put a nice even coat and then we'll apply our rice paper right on top of this. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that about so. Press that down, and then we're just gonna cut the remainder out. I'm just wondering, I want some more, no? Okay, that's good. All right, so I've smoothed this out onto our backing, 
and we're just gonna cut around there. that's gonna look like. Oh, that looks really cool. Okay. So now I'm just gonna put a little thin coat of Mod Podge on top as well, just to kind of seal that. I love working with this rice paper because there's never an issue at all. Just goes on so nicely, no bubbles. It's worth the extra money. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry and then we'll uh, try to assemble this here. Okay, so let me just move all this stuff over here. Okay. Now with her, we have her behind the glass and I'm just flipping this like that and flipping this like that. Okay, so now with her, we're just gonna put her on the inside of the glass. I'm not gonna use Mod Podge on that because I don't want it to be streaky. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna cut as close as I can. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna cut as close as I can Okay, so we're just gonna put a little bead of glue right here. And I think we need to cut off a little bit because I think that will show. I think that's gonna show if I don't cut a little bit more off. I'm just gonna cut a little more off of the end here. Maybe like. So, okay. And we'll put a little glue right there on the bottom. I'm gonna put it right across here. And then I'm gonna fold the paper. That should hold her good. All right. Okay, we're gonna assemble this here. So we have this that we just did. All right, so I'm gonna flip our frame upside down and then we're gonna flip her in to that, carefully doing that so I don't break the glass. I decided to paint these just because I thought you could see them on the sides and I want them to be black. So I have a little of this DIY paint in black velvet it's called and we're just gonna, we're just gonna paint these really quick. Okay, so we painted all these sticks and we're just gonna put them back in. I'm 
I'm gonna glue them to the side. Well, hold on, hold on. Maybe we can pound them in. No. Okay, yeah, we're gonna glue them. Take a little hot glue and put it along the edge. We're just gonna put that right there. This is gonna hold that glass in. I want to see what that looks like. Yeah, that's going to look good. Okay, so I'm just going to do that all the way around. Okay, so this is all glued in. We glued it all the way around. Now I'm just gonna clean the glass because I had my fingerprints on there. And we want it to be as clean as possible because this is gonna be sealed up. So I'm just gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on there. Then we're just gonna clean a little bit of this so that I don't have any fingerprints in here. Any strings of glue I see, I'm gonna get out of there. Again, this is gonna be sealed up, so we wanna make sure that it's clean. Okay, remember earlier we Mod Podge this on so I'm gonna flip this over and we're gonna put this in the back. So we can cover the back with some um, paper again, just to kinda make it look more finished. We're not gonna use the second painted glass because there's really no reason to. I mean, this already gives us dimension. She's there and then the, the backing is a little further away. So I think that looks really cool. So um, I think that's about it. So my mom gives me this weird thing. I'm like, I don't even know what this is. You know what? To tell you the truth, I don't even think she knows what it is. She just thought it was cool. She painted it black. And uh, now I got to come up with a decal for it. Now I'm going to show you what I did with it. But if you have any ideas, put them in the comments. I would love to hear what you come up with. I created a decal and I'm just peeling off the excess vinyl. After weeding out all the extra vinyl, I applied transfer tape so we could transfer over our decal. I then used a credit card to go over the transfer tape just to make sure that all the lettering was stuck to the transfer tape. I used the credit card again just so that I could smooth that down onto our object. Then I pulled the transfer tape off. I used a little piece of this orange flowers that I got from the thrift store. Um, and I also used a little bit of um, some greenery that I got from Hobby Lobby. I took a little piece of jute and tied it around the little orange flowers and that little piece of greenery. And then with a hot glue gun, I glued it in place. Well, although I had my doubts, I think this came out pretty good. If you have any ideas of what you would have done, I would love to hear them in the comments. If you like this episode of Flea Market Rescue and you want to see more episodes, 
make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.